Mm -hmm. you, you all know we are basically all disease related and this is a classification and mm -hmm. mainly we are in the uh, binary cross country because uh, for COVID, non-COVID, probably binary cross country classification, your error function or all or in other cases maybe categorical cause entropy so that you have a multi-class so this thing and and uh, this is a loss function so i am a uh, little bit puzzled which which one you are using i think binary cross entropy you are using and others is categorical cross entropy sparse cause entropy that i i will check it and tell it to you so these things i want this that you be, be careful and another thing is uh, you have uh, we have to uh, today Devajyoti, also you also mentioned today i also i also earlier know but uh, we can we can go for the kaggle uh, platform is uh, up to the mark of collab also but is people support is connection time is better and more of things last lot of competition as there. that is in collab is not there collab is very good maybe for uh, your learning platform as a python but python is a machine learning only dedicated for machine learning and platform and competition so we should compete there in Kaggle and Kaggle connection time TPU site is slightly better and I have tested my all programs there it's uh, in Kaggle it is working fine so and another thing we all follow the Google technologies Google's technology for web app next week everybody have to present including me uh, on a flutter hello world application so this is our target so everywhere everyone will honor of us and uh, today i uh, hand over the budgeti on only local machines so so we are talking about like uh what should you google collab or uh, kaggle so after the jupyter notebook came uh, so google wanted that to uh, host that app in some online platform so that uh, some of the teammates also can contribute simultaneously so it would be uh, some kind of uh, pretty good feature or uh, teamwork. So Google Collab is came. Google Collab is nothing but the same same Jupyter notebook that's uh, with online person and uh, multiple people can uh, contribute at the same time. After that, Kaggle of Kaggle came. So Kaggle is a, a com competition platform that uh, like if you guys are familiar with uh, competitive programming or something like that, then you might know that code sources, code sets, stack up rank, they are some competition platforms. With, with some inbuilt IDs. Same case here in Kaggle that platform. What happens is uh, some organizations provide some data, and most of the data are open source. Maybe some doctor or maybe some giant companies like um, Google also provide the data, and they uh, organize some uh, competitions. So, so Kaggle is a, a community basically. You can say. To perform this work, so the same thing. Kaggle notebook comprises of same thing, the same Jupyter notebook. Uh, notebook you can say, uh, but in Kaggle, what happens is they as they get uh, they get more uh, more open open source support. So they have they have actually lot of support in back. In uh, most of uh, big companies, they are uh, sponsoring to Kaggle. Uh, so because they are hosting their uh, uh, images and uh, maybe some data uh, for, for some open source competition. So Kaggle, uh, so this is the why the Kaggle provides some additional resources. You may say uh, the as I know as I know the Kaggle platform allows us to run uh, approximate ten hours uh, ten hours by uh, completely like uh, if you disconnect from the Kaggle notebook and keep it running, it will run up to 10 hours that's a huge but in google if you try to run it might uh, get stopped after one or two hours i cannot remember actually but so uh, so called you can say that google is less in here providing the resources also kaggle provides uh, 30 hours minimum 30 hours of uh, gpu training per week so that's huge like uh, gpu training is 10 times faster than the normal training and it's it's really helpful. So, also there are some GPU training also, but uh, we'll be considering the GPU only for image data sets. <laughs> so, so, in Kaggle platform, uh, by using the utilizing the Kaggle, uh, Kaggle platform, we can do almost any uh, any type of model training or testing. Okay. 
So you do not have to go to uh, some Google for uh, premium big features or something like that. Kaggle is enough, more than enough to do. And after that, uh, okay, uh, some other day you have, you have asked uh, like how we can make the application uh, predict the uh, predict and detect the uh, the classification or anything. Uh, so what we do is in Kaggle platform we train the model and test it. After testing, what we do is uh, we exported the model. Like we can say model dot save, and it will uh, save the model uh, with a file. Some uh, the file extension I cannot remember, but uh, with some extension it saves in the storage, and you can download it. After downloading, what you do is uh, in the Flask uh, in Flask requirements, you can mention like we need TensorFlow, and uh, after that you can import the model like model dot load or something like that. Some command right there. So model dot load loads the data in the Flask application, and after that you can uh, you can uh, make some endpoints uh, for uploading the image and model dot predict will predict the image and it will show the uh, response. But as we are now uh, going forward with Flutter, then the architecture will be little little bit different. So uh, let me explain like how. How it will be implemented or decoded? Uh, so, if we are going also with Flutter, then also we cannot um, completely build the application because we need at least one uh, Python-based framework at the back end to run. So uh, suppose uh, in backend we have Flask, and Flask, and Flask is hosting the application uh, with TensorFlow. So it has the model. It's backend and it has the model. Then what we can do is we can open some endpoints. Endpoints mean that get host host. So we can open some endpoints, okay. And uh, what we'll do is our Flask application. This is our Flask, app, uh, not Flask, sorry, Flutter application. This is Flutter application. So what this will do is it, uh, after the user import in, imports the sorry, not import, uploads the image. So it will make a get call or post call to our uh, backend model. And uh, in the backend model, the image gets uh, predicted, and the result will be coming to uh, coming back to Flutter. So uh, it will make uh, the response, and we can show the response to the user. And as the Flutter, as with the Flutter, we can simultaneously develop web, Android, and Android and uh, iOS apps and several apps. So we, we can do this like this, but actually we need this backend model, backend platter, uh, uh, backend uh, server to actually communicate between our Python uh, machine learning model to the front end web application. I also did the same, but I have not used the Flask. What I did is I just implemented our front end with the Flask. So uh, it directly uploads the image and gets predicted in the Flask web application itself. But here in this case, we need some endpoints like it post boot update, okay? Because uh, the Flutter application need to communicate with the backend application, so the data can be sent and the result also can be get uh, in the Flutter. So uh, this is how the system will, uh, will be looks like. And uh, Sarah also asked if we can implement uh, some kind of automation uh, to, so that if a image gets uploaded, then also we will be adding that image to the training set. So this also can be possible, but uh, I guess it will be more complicated for uh, doing so because for that also we will be needing some another uh, server. Okay, because training an image and uh, loading back to the uh, backend server uh, will be a little bit tougher or complicated, you can say. So if the image gets uh, trained here, okay, now the image gets comes here. 
and uh, there must be some um, some surface or some kind of like that with the endpoints so the image comes to the um, training server you can say training server and it uh, train the model again it uh, export the model some service also then again put the model back to the backend server and it gets continued okay because um, to model uh, to again train or model uh, train and test the model we have to do this otherwise what happens is in heroku itself we cannot do that because the heroku storage is not um, consistent we can say and the storage limits also and uh, we are talking about the model the model size is itself uh, around 1 gigabyte okay. so the free limit of heroku may might get uh, problem so uh, i guess we need will be needing some additional server uh, for the automation process but it's it's later part not the first part first part will be needing the backend server and the flutter app will be working on and after that if we need, if we need to uh, uh, enhance the features like auto training uh, like if some images get uh, added to the uh, our model so we need some back end service for that to work on okay sir uh, any question please yeah very thank you tt uh, has joined our 2020 2020 batch uh, with she has worked very excellently with pravin kumar so tt uh, whatever you have discussed today we are basically all machine learning and deep learning apps, we uh, try to uh, make it, uh, this is an ongoing effort, you have already done your best, make in uh, web app, iOS app and the uh, app, we have chosen the flutter as a technology and also uh, what we have discussed uh, today, 2020 pass on Devanjyoti, I think you know Devanjyoti very well, Devanjyoti has given a lecture and uh, we are all trying to put in a web app form in uh, with the flutter technology because uh, Devojiti right now mentioned that, but we also side by side, we can right now, uh, people can try the Hidoku, but Hidoku has some limitation. Probably we can uh, uh, get it around with the Flutter and another thing uh, we, we for this uh, the platform at the, the Colab and another platform is uh, just mentioned that is Kaggle, uh, that is especially mentioned for machine learning jobs. Uh, so. Uh, that is our all old applications we try to make it on uh, this uh, flutter application and uh, uh, kaggle and kaggle there is we can get a data set uh, there is i found that there is a very competitive model and google support in kaggle also so uh, anything uh, Pradipto, can you want to say, discuss with uh, you at your time uh, can we start a uh, uh, little bit with the technology with the flutter at your time so, Pradipta, think of it. Pradipta, any question? No, sir. I'm, I'm just, uh, okay. Getting... Okay, no issue. Uh, 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 Deepika, if you have a question. Deepika, are you there? Deepika? Deepika. Titi, please speak something. Yeah, so I thanks for your briefing. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, uh, Devojyoti, I joined late. I can you please brief me about your project, like what your uh, app is actually doing? I want to know about this. Okay, so uh, it was simply about uh, breast cancer detection. One of the most famous or most popular breast cancer is um, what? I forgot the term. Okay, I remember. It's IDC. Okay, so. IDC uh, induct induct uh, ductile carcinoma. Okay, so this is a cancer uh, type. So we had some images um, with IDC positive and IDC negative. Okay, so that means it's cancerous or non-cancerous. So it was some uh, binary classification. Okay, so we we trained the model in Kaggle platform. Then we exported the model to our backend Flask server and loaded there okay. and uh, we implemented a front end with the flask like html css we upload uh, so some person can upload the image and the flask uh, application like our backend can predict that image and so out the response like is it idc positive or negative like is it, is it cancer or something so that was a simple application that we did 
Devajiti, can you show the PPT? Because Titi has missed that part. You show okay. the PPT. Yeah. So here at the camera. Okay. So here are the sample images. And uh, what happened is this data set was available in the Kaggle itself. Some uh, doctors and researchers uh, classified these images and uh, they already have uh, sliced their images to some uh, to, to some specific sites. Here it's mentioned 50 plus 50. They already did all of them. We just took the images and modeled that with different model, uh, most famous models and we implemented. We use Linet, PGG19, Halexinet, and our. Okay. So, which model gave you the best result? Halexinet, we can say. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Titi, uh, we have uh, already, uh, your doctors have given very good feedback. I'll come to you and Praveen Kumar about your work and uh, Devojiti's work. So, Devojiti. Please, you revive the work uh, and try to get some comparable results from outside world. So, we are first we're going to publish this result with our name and then uh, side by side app development web app because we know that uh, Android app uh, doctors might not be used because whenever the, we are basically making all these packages for not for general persons, for doctors. So, doctors can see at web app is better. So, but we, our focus is both. So, that the Flutter technology gives the all advertising, but we should be next uh, week. Whenever we see, uh, I we everybody should try a flutter app, small flutter, flutter app. Okay, Titi, any very are you uh, please revive the work with Praveen. I think Praveen uh, will be will be next week. Praveen Kumar will be there. Okay, okay. Then can can we call it a day? Thank you. Anybody can feedback.